right, let's get started here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sean Davenport-Smith, and thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to be talking about solutions for today's drafting appliance problems. And uh, today, we got Jason Geegan with US Draft, and he is going to talk to us about some of those solutions. So without further ado, thank you, Jason. Thank you very much, and I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to, to join you guys today. Um, as some of you may have heard, um, there is a storm that came through last night. Uh, I am based in Houston, Texas, so uh, uh, luckily we didn't have any issues, but if there are some technical glitches, I apologize uh, ahead of time. But we're going to try and blast through this. Um, as Sean said, we're going to talk about uh, boiler venting and, and some of the things that we do to assist with that. But the first thing I want to cover is uh, natural venting. So if you can naturally vent an appliance um, per the manufacturer's instructions, please do so. Uh, it's the best way. It's the most efficient way to do it. It was how the boiler was designed. Um, out three feet, up 12 feet, cap it above the roof, and you're good to go. Um, second thing is that appliance categories do matter. A lot of people are, are still using old principles based on category one appliances when the new CAT 2, 3, and 4 appliances um, just have different parameters and different requirements. So make sure you know the, the category of the appliance um, that you're, you're installing. Third thing is PVC and CPVC are not listed materials. Now there are many manufacturers that are um, getting approved to be installed with B or with uh, excuse me with PVC or CPVC, but it, the material itself is not a, is not listed to UL 1738 standards. So they don't have to go through the testing and um, and such that the uh, polypropylenes and the stainless steel pipes of the world uh, have to go through to get approvals. And then finally, uh, follow the the manufacturer's instructions. And that's pretty much kind of uh, industry standard for everything you do, but specifically for boilers, uh, it used to be that a Cat 1 boiler, you could put it in, you put a barometric damper, you, you know, run it up with some B-Vent and you're good. And they all basically did the same thing. Um, nowadays with some of these different manufacturers, some want to be positive, some want to be negative, some want to be as close to neutral and have a very tight window. So you really have to tighten up um, the installation instructions when you're putting in uh, your system, especially for engineers that are specifying multiple appliances different manufacturers, it may meet manufacturer A's uh, requirements, but it may not be uh, your, your two listed alternatives. So just keep that in mind when doing your designs. Uh, the main reason I get calls um, is pretty much three reasons. Um, if they don't want to individually vent or if they, they can't for whatever reason, they're stuck with a single hole in the, in the ceiling and they want to put all their appliances through that single hole, common venting of appliances. Um, if it exceeds that recommendation by the manufacturer, they read the instructions and it says they can only go 75 feet and they have to go 100 plus feet. They'll call me and say, hey, can you assist us with that? And then the third one is venting codes. Um, we're going to talk about the first two kind of in concert because they do work together. Um, many times the manufacturer does not allow common venting. So therefore, um, that's the reason for the call. And even if they were, um, there are a few out there that do allow that. The problem with that is that your venting pressures are all over the map um, whenever you come and vent. If you design it for full load capacity, um, which is what you're supposed to do, as your boilers turn on and off and as you uh, see different firing rates and different uh, temperature ratings of the, or temperatures of the stack, whether it's a cold stack, a hot stack, your pressures are gonna go anywhere from a 0.16 negative all the way back up to almost like a 0.15 positive. It's a huge swing, almost three tenths of an inch uh, swing and typically in a common vent system, you're going to target just slightly below neutral, say about a 0.04, 0.05, somewhere in that range. So as you can see, anything above here, that means we don't have enough draft. We need something to assist uh, with draft. Anything down here, we have too much draft, okay? And we can fix both of those problems. Uh, first one is not enough. What do you do when you don't have enough draft? You put a fan on it, okay? Um, this is a typical mechanical draft system. You've got your three appliances, You've got your uh, controller. You've got your fan system up here on the roof. Um, we do offer some inlines. We'll show you in a minute. Pressure transducers reading pressure stack or pressure in the stack in the common header. So we're just going to maintain that 0.05 negative in that common stack there, which puts us in the range of these appliances. As the boiler gets a call for heat, it sends a signal over to my controller. That controller turns on the fan, does its checks, verifies pressure. Yes, we're good to go. Releases the boiler to fire. As soon as that happens, the boiler has to go through its checks. The first thing it does is pre-purge. And by, by code, it has to turn over that air chamber three to five times. So that sends a whole bunch of cold air into my stack. 
which is going to change my pressure. My fan senses that and modulates accordingly. So we're always going to maintain that pressure no matter what's going on as boilers turn on and off, up and down, left and right. We're good to go. Um, we offer three different style fans. We showed you the CBX uh, termination fan on the roof. We also have our inline options of TRV and T9F. Everything by code must go through an appliance interlock control. You cannot just throw a fan on, uh, onto a boiler and hope for the best. You have to have some safety devices to interlock with that fan to make sure that it turns on and off and that it also is able to shut the appliances off if it's not capable of handling draft. So um, make sure you have your appliance interlock controller available. A uh, few of the features of our fans, all of our models, uh, excuse me, the, the, our largest model goes up to 16,000 CFM. Um, that's a pretty good sized boiler system. Um, our termination fan can handle up to 1,000 degrees continuous. Not a lot of boiler systems are running 1,000 degrees right now, but um, that's a great application for industrial kilns, ovens, stoves, that type of thing. All things that need to be vented and all things that need some uh, potential assistance. So um, we do have that 1,000 degree rating. EC or induction motors, our EC motors go up to one horsepower. It's a very simple zero to 10, very high efficient motor. Um, our three phase motors are all induction motors. We provide the VFD to vary the speed of that, that motor. All of our products come in stainless steel. Most of the time we're gonna ship it out with 316L. Um, the reason for that is most of the applications that we deal with are condensing applications or near condensing to where there's a good chance of condensate being in that system. And so um, condensate is very corrosive. And so uh, some other manufacturers are using a cast aluminum housing or they're using a carbon steel with an epoxy coating that flakes off after two weeks. Um, so we've gone to all stainless steel on all of our products. Um, it's, it's a much more robust material to handle the corrosiveness of condensate. What if we have too much draft? Well, we do the exact opposite. We try and slow it down and we'll put an inline damper um, in the system as the pressure starts to take off on us. We'll choke that down, create false back pressure through our OBD. It's a multi-blade damper. Uh, it is a pose blade. And it, um, again, thousand degree rating. We do have auxiliary switches for uh, end switches for certain jurisdictions. Otherwise we have a feedback signal to verify position, all stainless steel. Um, the one thing I do want to notice about the, the, the design is this is a square damper with a round uh, uh, adapter. Some manufacturers are doing a round damper with a square cut out of the middle. Now, I'm not a geometry teacher, but I can tell you that the, the free area of a square inside the circle is less than the area of a square outside of a circle, okay? So that's why we did it. All of our connections are on the outside. Fastest actuator in the industry, it's two second full open to full close. Draft controls are all about speed and reaction. So we wanna make sure we react to that um, and, and get us to set point as quickly as possible. So we've chosen um, to work with a, a manufacturer to make a two second actuator. When it comes to controls, this is really where we feel we've kind of pushed the industry to the next level. Um, most of the industry has always run negative pressure. Uh, zero to 0.6 is typically the range that we've seen from, our, uh, from the competitors. And what that does is if your set point is now going to be a 0.04, um, once that boiler starts up, we talked about that big rush of pressure during pre-purge, that's going to spike maybe all the way up to a half an inch. Um, but imagine an old school car that had a speedometer that went to 85. Um, that, that pegs at 85, you're not going to know how fast you're going. Same thing here. It's pegging at neutral. You have no idea how positive that stack is going. It might be one tenth, it might be five tenths. The computer thinks they're four hundredths of an inch away, slowly ramps up, eventually gets the set point. With us, we see that spike because we read positive and negative, bi-directional, same time, okay? Um, plus or minus one inch. We see that spike, we react to that spike and get us the set point, typically 50 to 60% faster. Um, and that could be the difference between a nuisance flame fail or a smooth running system, okay? Um, all of our controllers are bi-directional using that uh, di differential pressure transducer. It also allows us a high and low pressure safety. If you, only can, if you can only read to zero, you cannot have a high side pressure limit. Why does that matter? Well, if your fan dies, that's the first thing that's gonna pop is that, that pressure limit, okay? So if something happens to that fan, you're not gonna know it in time to keep that system safe. With us, we see that spike, can't maintain pressure, we shut the system down, okay? It's all fuel, uh, fully field programmable. Um, we have our PID loop, our filters, our reaction times, all of the alarm set points, all of that is available to be adjusted in the field by a qualified technician. Um, 
the one thing that we're offering, and I believe we're the only ones offering it in the draft control industry is a touchscreen. Um, we do offer a low cost four, four button LCD control, but our primary controls are all gonna be a seven inch touchscreen. And what that does gives you all of your information on the screen, your set point, your limits, uh, your current pressure, it even shows you a nice gauge to give you some visual. Um, you can look across the room and see where that's running um, during the operation. And then finally Modbus, First question I always get, um, can you do the back net? Absolutely, we can do that through a gateway. Um, but Modbus is the uh, primary standard communication. So just let us know if you need to use back net, IP, MSTP, whatever it may be. Um, the third reason I told you about getting phone calls is for code. Um, and so one of the common code violations that we see is what I call the 10 foot, three foot rule. Um, code lists that there's a whole bunch of things that if you're within two to three feet, you have to, or if you're, within, if you're within 10 feet, you have to exceed it by two to three feet. Um, I just use three feet as a rule of thumb because it's much easier to remember. So 10 foot, three foot, and that could be a pitched, uh, pitched roof, parapet walls, cooling towers, small children, whatever's in your way, you got to get above it. Or you can ignore code and do stuff like this. Um, I won't rip on all three of all of these, but this one I can't fix. Um, that is an exhaust into a makeup air unit. Um, I can't fix that. But what I can do is hide your vents. Um, this is a hospital down in Dallas um, that the owner just didn't want to see the stacks. So instead of having a 42 inch piece of pipe sticking up here, we took that pipe down, put a fan on it, runs flawless. It didn't need it for performance. It didn't need it for code. It just needed it for appearance. Um, if you ever go to Disney World, check out, look for vent pipes. You won't find them because they have, all of their vent pipes have fans on them because they don't want to ruin the aesthetics of the building. Uh, seven times area rule. This is where it basically says you can't put a four inch B vent into a 32 inch brick chimney um, because the area of that chimney is just too large. It won't ever prime that stack. So um, we can put a fan on it and overcome that as an engineered system. Okay. Finally, common venting of different categories. If you have a category four boiler and a category one water heater, or a condensing water heater and a low pressure steam boiler, and you wanna put them all through a common vent, um, you can't do that naturally. First off, no manufacturer in the world is gonna let you combine product. Second off, code doesn't allow you to, to combine products. So um, you'd have to put a fan on that. The biggest caveat to that is make sure your vent pipe is listed to all of the different appliances. If you have a Cat4 and a uh, building heating appliance, it must have a Cat4 and UL 103 listing. If you have any questions about that, contact long and uh, we can work together and get you something designed up. Good venting practices. If you're doing a mechanical draft system, please give me a common header all the way past that last appliance. Most of the time I will get a header and then it will uh, reduce right here. And the problem with that is that I have nowhere to really sense pressure. Okay. So I want to be in this end cap right here. So I'm just sensing pressure. I'm not sensing flow. It gives me a much better uh, cleaner system if I can have that at the end of the system. So please remember that. If you learn nothing else today, know that lateral T's are your friend. Okay. Um, flu gases are pretty stupid. They do exactly what you tell them to do. So if you tell them to bang their head against this wall right here, they'll do that and create back pressure. Okay. We want a nice flow merging into the common header. These are boot T's. These are lateral T's. There is a difference. The K value of this is not the same as this. Okay, so if you cannot fit a lateral T, use a boot T. Never, ever, never, ever use a straight T. Okay, um, these cost more, they take up more space, all of that, but it's the proper device for a boiler venting system. So please use lateral T's as much as possible. Uh, last product I want to go over is um, something that we introduced uh, about three years ago, and we talked about overdraft. And, and this seems to be more of an issue, especially in the colder climates like Denver. Um, and instead of worrying about system pressure, we now are actually worried about the boiler pressure. So we put our, in our, we call it the connector draft system, the CDS, and it's actually sensing pressure for each appliance. It has its own individual draft controller for each appliance. Okay. Um, it's fully packaged, all stainless steel controller, transducer, blade, pressure port. Um, we introduced this, like I said, we were one of the first to introduce this into the condensing market. And it's been a huge, huge um, product for us. So this can actually give you a lot more flexibility in your design. Um, make sure you contact your long salesperson to get more details about this uh, for your boiler applications. 
And then lastly, I could do an entire coffee break about carbon monoxide. Um, it is the bane of my existence. And I think that every boiler room should have a carbon monoxide monitor. We provide one with every draft control system we, uh, we provide, but it can be used as a standalone as well. So please uh, let us know if you have any questions about that. And finally, uh, sizing. We do all the sizing for you, provide you a nice report. That way you can look, at, uh, look back in your files a few years from now and know, remember why we did what we did um, and, and all of that. So um, with that, I turn it back over to Sean. I appreciate the time. Hope you guys have a great afternoon. Thank you, Jason. Really appreciate it. A lot of good stuff there. If anyone has any questions or would like more information, please reach out to your long sales engineer. Please join us next week where Jeff McBride will be discussing Daikin North America, the evolution of the inverter compressor and introducing Daikin Fit for multifamily. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.